people and they maybe wouldn't leave till about half past two. And they always wanted, the Shand band always wanted to win their own bed. Jimmy was quite keen to get him uh, after a gig. Uh, you know, to, to get to their own beds, but he would make sure he'd spoken to everybody, shaking hands, had a cup of tea, and we sang. And the band said to him one night, said, Jimmy, is there not, no chance we can actually get away when we're finished playing and maybe not have all that meeting every day and stuff like that? And he went, Son, these are all the people that pay your wages. So I think we can afford to have a wee work with them. That was, that was them putting their place. He was great. Uh, my old radiogram used to pick up the polis. Numpty heed, yes, it was against the law apparently to listen. And you very often only got one side. But newspapers, I think, were always tuned in. It was on uh, very high up the VHF dial. Probably belongs to a radio station now. And you could get the polis, but it was one side of the conversation. So there we are. Yes, you're right about the poultice. Because I thought she said bacon. Well, bacon powder. I've never heard of that. Heard of powdered egg. Partly they had powdered egg during the war. And I'll tell you, my grandfather had a biscuit tin. And he would say, um, get a wee biscuit out the cupboard there. And you open this tin. And the tin was a silver tin with um, blue label, not a stick-on label, part of the tin printed on the tin. And it was national dried milk from the Second World War. And my grandfather used that as a biscuit tin. He put his biscuits, his tea biscuits in it. I was involved with the community station in Govins, Tony, were based in the old Dartley Street Police Station. I remember working through the cells late night. Scary. I could hear shouting. Oh, yes. The Rat Pack. Yes, Catherine, the Rat Pack. Now, who was the Rat Pack? Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr. Who else was in the Rat Pack? Fantastic, the Rat Pack. Walking through the cells, that should be. Oh, I'm walking through the cells. Quality Scottish, says Glenn. Did you like that, Glenn? About two years ago, I went into several pharmacies looking for Kaelin. Well, Kaelin Poultice. None of them had a clue. I did, however, get a drawing paste, various minerals in a stick paste. A stick, you put it on to draw it, to help draw it. Yes, and I'm sure there was something else you could put on, and that would draw out a boil. Um, <clears throat> now, kaolin, you could, if you had a, a wee problem with your tummy, and you're a wee bit on the loose side, and it went on for any length of time that it was interfering with your life, you could get kaolin and morphine. And the kaolin dried you up, and the morphine, the kaolin dried you up, and the morphine, I think, calmed um, the intestine down. Kaolin and morphine. Remember that. The Baron's here, Alistair Campbell, you are indeed. Fantastic, you're 100% correct. Ever thought of taking up busking, Scotty? Not to heed, that was me busking. Jimmy, steep moon, dinky-doo, dinky-doo. The legendary McClure, I wish new viewers could hear Linda too, a wonderful musician, nice, Scotty. Yes, absolutely. But um, I can't put Linda on because if she plays professional tunes, I get hit with the copyright. Very, very interesting. So there you go. Numpty... Scotty couldn't be quite long enough to busk. Thanks, Catherine. What a lovely thing to say. Do you know that if you're busking in Paris on the Metro and they keep time with the music because there was a wee guy who used to run round the Metro in Paris. He was known as the Metronome. And um, when you see what I just did there, and uh, if you're busking uh, in the Metro, but you have to audition. They don't just let any old rubbish onto the tubes. It's not It's not London, you know, that sort of idea. So there you are. If you're tuned into the radio around 99 to 100, you got the police. That's right. It was up high on the VHF. And, of course, nowadays they belong to radio stations, these. My Uncle Michael was well chuffed with his 95th birthday greeting. The other night he asked, what happened to your glasses? I've still got my glasses, Grobler. Yes, no problem at all. Um, now, Uncle Michael, did you get it on, did you hear it on one of the five-minute clips? Because we had it on the clips, so you should have